hello guys how are you all doing uh so as i said before i forgot to record the audio while i was making the video which apparently left me talking to myself which was i mean sounds a bit weird now that it's over but uh like we decided from the uh the comments uh i'm going to be uploading the normal video but what i did was uh i sped it up just a little bit like uh two times to three times uh, a little bit so I'm gonna be talking over it and then be mentioning the crucial parts that I took so you don't uh, make any mistakes yourself so let's get on it so this part right here is me working on a tail light cover all right so you can see I duplicated this side duplicated that side and joined the two of them just so we have a seamless uh, flow of edge and I duplicated this one as well joined the two and uh, made it one I deleted everything below but first I merged the edges, the corners, uh, deleted that side, merged this corner as well, deleted that side and deleted everything else below. Now, I want to merge this side as well, we don't want any space in the middle so I merged them up and uh, yeah. So we're going to try to align things here in this area just to try to make it look even better. So you would notice that I'm adding in a few vertices, uh, dissolving the corner vertices as well as you can see. Alright, now I extruded that side up and then tried to match it with, uh, uh, you should notice I didn't actually scale it to match it with the surface. What I did was, uh, I mean in the beginning I tried scaling it but that wasn't working. So what I did was I shared it with Control alt shift s and an S and then shared it in the Y axis. So you're going to watch that right now. As you can see, I'm sharing it right here, trying to match the surface as much as possible before we uh, try to fill in the, the rest of the faces. So I just used loop tools in that place just to make sure the spaces were even added in another vertex over here filled in the face and I want to share it some more just so it is uh, matching very nicely all right now I added in another uh, I mean an extra edge over here and I added one on the other side as well as you can see we're gonna use that later selected that four and pressed F I'm gonna add in an extra vet I mean edge just so we have enough amount of vertices to work with here as you can see so I just applied loop tools in that area just to make sure the spaces were even very nicely. Now I want to try to scale it this time instead of sharing it. Just a little bit of course. Now I want to add one at the top and then join it with the one below on the side. And I'm going to add extra vertices in here. Fill in the spaces and then slide it up. Fill in the space and then slide it up and then press F for the rest of the faces to fill it in. Now I'm going to bulge the side out with Alt and S. So I'm just going to press Alt and S and then stretch it out a bit just to make it curvy and I'm going to join this to join that two slide the vertices around and then join them to the first one the one in front take those four and press F take these two and press F take that two press F and I'm going to add two extra edges in the middle here take those two try to bulge it out with Alt and S and I'm going to take that one as well bulge it out a little bit the entire thing of course and I want to take these two press F all the way down below take this shrink it in a bit shrink that in a bit shrink this in a bit and shrink everything else on that side in a bit just to make it nice and smooth all right i took this four and press f to the rest of those two press f to fill in the faces we shaded it smooth just to make it look better and as you can see it is coming out great all right i'm gonna add in uh, supporting edge loops here but i noticed that the far left hand side wasn't looking too good so i undo that i dissolve the edges and then pull those side out a bit and then I re-added in the uh, supporting edge loops just to make it look better. Alright, I added one below as well, one on the outer side, just so the solidify can work much better. So you can see I added one in here and then join the other side as you can see. And I'm going to select all of these faces to create the uh, the white area, the white glass area. So I took all of those faces and deleted the faces just to see what that looks like. And as you can see, it looks great. So I bring I brought that back and uh, kept it there. All right, I'm going to extrude this inside for the solidify. So I just extruded it inside, added in a supporting edge loop. And now we can go ahead and add in the solidify modifier, as you can see. All right, so we enable that and then try to uh, match the thickness just to give it a nice good thickness. Uh, enable even thickness and disable only rim and then try to go with a good amount of thickness for you uh, as you can see I went with 0 0.002 and I think that's actually looking really good all 
Alright, so I'm pretty sure that does it for the tail light. Now we're going to be working on the rear view mirror, which is the main thing in this video. So you can see I took some vertices from the door and brought it out here. And I'm going to line it on the blueprint line of the rear view mirror and try to match it. As you can see, it's not at the end of the blueprint, but I made sure it was flat from top to bottom. And then moved everything onto the blueprint line, added in extra vertices. Notice the amount that I added in and then aligned it with the blueprint line just very nicely. And then I extruded the rest to the end over there. Applied loop to space on it and then I'm just going to take that edge over here, extrude it all the way to the other side, add in extra vertices and then align it with the blueprint line. Very nice. You can see I'm not taking it all the way to the end of the blueprint line, just halfway and I'm going to extrude it up in a Z axis. Keep it straight, do not try to follow the blueprint line here, just keep it straight. And now we're going to extrude the other end of it around the blueprint line like this, as you can see. I'm going to extrude the rest like that, make sure the spaces in between them are even, join these two with F, add in extra vertices and align it with the blueprint line very nicely. Add one more and then apply loop tool space, not all the way to that edge. For now we're just going to scale it to kind of match the whole thing, so I scaled it in the Y axis with 0 and then shared it with Ctrl or Shift S just to make sure it matches the blueprint line very nicely. Now I'm going to apply loop tools to the, to the area right here, but do not add it to the 3 in the corner, as you can see. Now I'm going to take that 4, press F, take that 2, press F all the way to that side, adding 3 edges, scale it up, scale this up, and scale the final one up very nicely. And now I'm going to try to fill in this area right here, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to take that 4, press F, take this 2, press F all the way here. And I'm going to add one more in that corner, and then try to keep this place a quad. So I'm going to press F over there, slide this in a bit just to keep it a quad. Very nice. Now I'm going to try to create the curve in this area. So I added in 3, try to match the blueprint line, keeping the uh, spaces between them as even as possible and transitioning very nicely. So I took that 4, press F, take this 2, press F, and then add one in there, press Alt and S to bulge it out. Take that 2, press F twice, bulge it out a little bit more, take this 2, press F twice. Alright, now I'm going to try to fill this area as well, as you can see what I'm doing right here. I added an extra 2, bulge it out a little bit with Alt and S. And I want to take these 2, press F, and I want to take, I want to fill this place as a triangle. So, I'll actually merge that area first, and then fill this place as a quad, as you can see. Very nice. Alright, so I think that might actually do it for the top, but what we're going to do is to add an extra spotting edge loop to make this place rounded, as you can see. I'm going to try to keep this place as consistent as possible. Alright, so I just duplicated that edge below, made it its own object, and now I'm going to use that to create the bottom area of the rear view mirror. So you can see what I'm doing here, I'm extruding this area down. It's not the entire thing, just a bit of it, as you can see. I'm just trying to match the angle in this case from the side view, and I'm going to match it on the, on the front view as well, as you can see. Okay, so everything is looking good. I'm going to extrude the rest of the sides here down and then fill this four area. Keep it a quad and then try to make the spaces in between them even. Alright, now I'm going to try to create the, uh, the area over here. So I just filled in that area and then try to match the blueprint line. Now you don't have to follow this because uh, I actually deleted it later. But to keep things consistent, I would, I would advise that you follow as well. Alright, so we're going to go over to the top view, take that whole edge there, and then scale it in the Y axis, and type in 0, just so they are flat, and then press Ctrl or Shift S, and then Y, and then try to match the angle very nicely. Alright, so I took that 4 and press F. You can see we have a bit of a space in the front, but you can ignore that for now. I added in an extra vertex, slide it to the point where I think this term is going to be extruding out, as you can see. And I added an extra vertices in there. Again, notice how much I added in, and then I, I filled in those faces over there. And then I took that edge over here, I mean that space in there, and then extruded it down to match the angle. Just make sure the angle from the side and the front are angled accurately. But I think I had to fix something a bit here. So as you can see, that's what I'm doing, just making sure the stem is uh, equal on all sides because it wasn't on a side view. So I'm just going slide, to slide this in front a bit just so it is equal. And I'm going to take that whole vertices and extrude it down like this, making sure we're matching the angle as much as possible, as you can see. So I'm just going to slide this down all the way to here, take that, make, the, make, them, make that the active element and then just share it to match the angle. 
very nicely. All right, now when I screw that down, now we're gonna bend it a bit. It's not gonna go down straight. We're gonna bend it a bit, as you can see in the reference image, but make sure it is matching the angle from the side view, as you can see. All right, so it's coming out great. Okay, so you can see I ended up deleting that front edge over there. And I added in two extra loop cuts in here and then filled that space on the bottom. All right, now we're gonna keep this smooth. And as you can see, instead of adding in uh, vertices, I mean uh, supporting edge loops, I'm going to be using the bevel modifier for this. But first, let's create the space in between the mirror here. As you can see, I'm just going to press Alt and S to shrink it out. I mean, shrink it in and then adding supporting edge loops just like that. Now we can select those edges and then try to apply bevel modifier to it. So I'm going over to edge select mode and selecting all the edges that I need and then applying the mean bevel weight to it and then adding in a bevel modifier, setting it to the right amount and then making it look the way it's supposed to. I'm selecting the few, the few areas that I missed and adding in the bevel modifier. All right, very nice. So I'm just testing it with the uh, subdivision surface modifier and as, as you can see, it's coming out great. Alright, so I turned off the bevel modifier in some areas as you noticed. Still testing it with the subdivision surface modifier and it's coming out great. Alright, so I added an extra edge loop in here and I'm going to be sharing that on the x-axis just to pull it out a bit to match the blueprint. Now as you can see, I'm just going to select all this area and just try to pull it down a bit to match the blueprint line, just like that. And then making sure the angle is matched on the right hand side, as you can see. Alright, very nice. I'm just going to take this and slide it a bit, just like that. Alright, I'm going to pull that area down just a bit. And I'm going to add in supporting edge loops in this area, so I just hit that, added in the edge loops here, and then merge this in the center. And I'm just going to slide it around. That is just to help with that area a bit more. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing here. Try to adding supporting edge loops and then merge it up in the center. So first of all, I scaled it up to make sure the curviness is matching. And then I just slide it up to match the uh, the 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 wrap around in that area. Alright, so now I'm going to be creating the cutout for that area as you can see, but I'm not matching it with the blueprint line on the left, just making sure there's space there enough for it to be able to create the cutout. Alright, so I just deleted those vertices to make the cutout visible, as you can see. And I extruded it in the Y axis a bit. Make sure this is the active element, scale it in the X and scale it in the Y to match the surface very nicely. And I want to flip it the other way around and then scale it in the Y just to make sure the depth is equal. I want to add in supporting edge loops, add another one over here, just dissolve the rest that goes all the way to the left hand side, add another one and merge it in the center. Move things around to make it look better, adding a new edge loop just nicely like that. Alright, now I'm going to add in extra supporting edge loops over here, as you can see, and I'm going to join them to the vertex below, and I'm going to take the one in the middle, and I'm going to slide it around to make it more rounded. Alright, very nice. Okay, so let's slide this in a bit, just so it goes into the car, and I'm going to move the whole thing a bit in the X and the Z axis, just to match the, uh, the surface. So it's going to offset from the blueprint, but that shouldn't be a problem now that we have the base shape of the rear view mirror. Alright, so you can see I duplicated both of those edges, joined them together, and I'm going to use that to create the extra piece we have on the front, as you can see. Dissolving all the unnecessary uh, vertices that we don't need, as you can see.
So I'm just extruding it in the Y axis. Take the outer one, press F, and then we're going to insert to create the, uh, the width or the thickness of that piece over there. Extrude it in the Y axis a bit, extrude it again. And then we're just going to insert a tiny bit, press X and delete the faces. Now we're going to add in supporting edge loops on the inside and the outside. So everything is coming out great. Now in this area right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in extra vertices in here and I just try to slide this around to make it more rounded, as you can see. And I'm pretty much going to bevel this one right here. Put only three, three loop cuts in the middle. Right now we have four, so I'm going to drop it down to three and then keep it three, as you can see, like that. Now I'm going to take that edge over there, duplicate it. First of all, let's make it sharp and then I'm going to duplicate it. Press F to fill in the face. And I'm just going to insert to scale it down a bit. Just keep watching. Yeah, so I'm going to insert to scale it down a bit. Delete the outer vertices. Very nicely, I'm going to take the whole thing, extrude it. Very nicely like that. Now those blue areas you saw highlighted were sharp areas. I just made them sharp and as you can see in the, uh, the tab down below, I enabled auto smooth and then uh, increase that up to 180. All right, now we're creating the uh, the light area, as you can see. I'm gonna take the whole thing, insert it a tiny bit, and then delete the outer vertices, take the rest, extrude it in the Y axis, and then just make sure we scale it in the X axis to match the, uh, the thickness nicely. All right, so I'm just making sure the normal is facing the inside, as you can see. Just press shade smooth to smooth the surface very nicely and we're just going to fill the rest of the faces in there very nicely. Alright, I'm going to take all that and then shade, I mean enable auto smooth for that and mark it as sharp. Alright, now all we're going to do is to create the bars in the middle of the lights as you can see in the reference image. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to delete the ones on the on the other sides. And I'm going to take the ones in here and then try to slide it around just so they don't poke out of the mesh or the, the glass in front of it. All right, now we're adding in solidify just to make it thick. Just add the amount you think is good for you. All right, now all I'm gonna do is to create the actual glass on top of the 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 rear view mirror. I'm gonna fill all those faces and then try to uh, keep it out just so nothing is poking through. As you can see right now, we have some objects sticking through the glass, so we're just trying to we're just going to try and then slide things in, just so they pull inside the mesh a bit more and not poke out. All right, now I'm gonna add solidify modifier to the piece, adding supporting edge loops. And then we're gonna give it the thickness that we need. First off, let's fix this area. All right, now we're gonna give it the thickness that we need. You can go with whatever thickness you think is good for you. So I went with 0.001 or even less. I think I went with something much lesser. All right, so you can see the rear view mirror is looking good really really good just doing a few tweaks here and there all right now I'm gonna add a solidify to each piece just to make sure just to give it a sense of uh, thickness but first I separated that piece just so it's not affecting the piece on the inside and then I added it in, enabled only rim, enabled even thickness. And I'm going to do the same thing for the next one. Add in the solidify, adding supporting edge loops. We're going to enable even thickness and we're going to enable only rim. Use the amount of thickness that you think is best for you. I am going with 0.001 and I'm finally going to do that with the one below.
and now we have a good looking rear view mirror all right so as you can see everything came out great and everything is looking good just the way we want it to and uh I'm really sorry for not recording this the normal way but hopefully this is able to help you guys create the review mirror as I said this will not happen again and uh, yeah I think I will pretty much see you guys in the next video.